FTSE Russell is an index provider and research house under the LSEG umbrella. They specialize in convening the best ideas on evolving market trends and helping to develop strategies for global investors. In this series, we look at the evolution of the biggest of today's trends. In order to understand any company, you need to understand the culture and the people that run it. It's only after you understand them both that you can start to predict the trajectory that the company is on. To discuss the importance of correct management and governance, I talked to Dr. Kai Lee, Professor of Finance at the Souda School of Business. Well, Kai, thank you very much uh, for joining us for our chat today. Um, now, we're going to be talking particularly about corporate culture, which I know is your area of expertise. But before we talk about the evolution of corporate culture, can we perhaps just define what we mean by corporate culture? Um, corporate culture is just set of um, set of beliefs and norms that are guiding members of organization in all circumstances, anticipated or unanticipated. Un 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 mm -hmm. So, so is corporate culture, is it something that's organic to a company or is it something that's like set by the leaders? Great question. It is organic and typically we would say corporate culture comes from the top. Mm -hmm. Lead by example, that's how the leaders can shape, develop uh, organizations, uh, implicit rules, unspoken rules of how to behave in any circumstance. So can you give us some examples of you know, good corporate culture versus what you would consider poor corporate culture? Good corporate culture or strong corporate culture is, um, I guess they're just um, in, because first of all, culture is not that, uh, static, it's dynamic. So right. it really depends on the market condition and how the world evolves. I know the theme of this uh, particular forum is about sustainability and also digital assets, etc. But think about five, 10 years ago, those things, ESG, CSR, were not as high on people or corporate world mind as of today. Mm. So that's why when I studied corporate culture, the buzzword would be like innovation, quality, teamwork, integrity, etc. Mm. But I anticipate sustainability, climate change, uh, social, economic, perfor uh, environmental performance will be high on every modern corporation and their leaders mind going forward. A theme that you've looked at is the relationship between corporate culture and a company's performance. Yes. So uh, can you talk a little bit about what findings you've had from, from looking at uh, what effect good corporate culture has on the performance of a company? In corporate world, uh, everything is uh, co-determined at the same time. So it's very difficult to say there's a causal effect. Say strong, good culture will result in good performance. But what we can say is um, there's a trade-off. So to build a strong culture takes time, effort, and the resources. So in the short term, you might not be outperforming your peers, but in long term and during bad times, you really reap from your investment in good corporate culture. So that's interesting. So, um, so corp during the good times, it's quite difficult to see whether the corporate culture is good or bad because mm -hmm. it's only under times of duress where it gets tested, is that correct? That's right, because in crisis time, like the most recent COVID, there's, it's an unprecedented situation. There's even the top management is at a loss what to do. But if there's a core value management, uh, a rank and file employees will pitch in. They will do more without being asked and they also not asking for higher pay, for example. That's mm. what we observe actually in the real world. So, so specifically on that, um, how has the pandemic changed corporate culture today? Pandemic really uh, uh, raised great awareness that a firm has to have its core value guiding principle for employees uh, to outperform without asking for immediate compensation. So that just so corporate culture is almost like an insurance. Mm. In bad times, you really benefit from it because employees are not pressing you for higher pay in order to work more and employees will be highly motivated to contribute, especially like innovation, customer service, product development to help the firm uh, overcome uh, the momentary major setbacks. Okay, so I mean, when I think about the more traditional companies, the 
banking firms, the legal firms, I would think that the corporate culture there is probably less uh, good, perhaps, than uh, some of the more you know uh, newer technology companies. Is but that is that a fair assumption? It's a great it's it's a great observation. That mm. is in in uh, in corporate uh, finance or in a uh, corporate world in general, there's a industry specific effects. So exactly as uh, Jimmy you and uh, kind of conjectured. So that's what we see. So for high tech companies, uh, that they will be very strong in innovation and the quality. So customer product services uh, to uh, and uh, to like develop high quality product services to mm. satisfy their customers. So that's like high tech industry. We also see during the pandemic that we are fully aware the healthcare industry is just huge contribution, so important to all of us in all dimensions. They actually also score very high in teamwork and the integrity, which mm. is reassuring to know mm. people in those industry, uh, firms in those industry, they practice on those values. Uh, now you mentioned ESG investing, and that's something that's been a huge trend over the past five years or so. Do you find that the rise in ESG, uh, ESG investing is actually accelerating a move to better corporate culture from a diversity point of view? Oh, uh, definitely. As I said, corporate culture is not static. So it will be shaped by major events as you being uh, from the Wall Street, like going public is a watershed event. Like mm. Goldman was a great example. And also m and is another good example that culture will be shaped which I use IBM's acquisition of Red Hat. So here, with this uh, climate change, we all live and breathe with extreme weather patterns. So there'll be rising awareness about we need to do something instead just go to the bottom line. Now we have the triple bottom line, it's like people, profit, planet. So mm -hmm. ESG, environmental social performance, diversity itself is part of the social performance. So they will definitely reinforce each other going forward. One of the other topics I wanted to discuss with you is how corporate culture is going to change over the next five years or so. And one thing that is inevitable is the place of AI within companies. And I think no matter what company you are, even the more traditional ones like uh, accountancy in the medical world, AI will play a part. So how is that going to affect corporate culture and what do we need, need to do now to sort of prepare for it? Um, it's a multifaceted question. I would think like in my own work, I use actually machine learning in order to capture culture. Just like from very uh, beginning today during the interview, you were asking me how to define culture a little bit bulked because it's something you live and breathe. My personal experience, I'm very fortunate to start in a place with a great culture, which collegiality. So culture is really something so-called intangible assets. You can only experience it, but it's not quantifiable. Mm. So that creates great, uh, like there's so much work, it's not only in finance, in accounting, in management literature, everybody talks about corporate culture slash organization culture, but it's just so hard to quantify it and then to establish a relationship between culture and performance. So previous work prior to mine, people just do questionnaires and a service, but that is just going to be a very small sample. You always have survey related problems. So what we did is I was very fortunate to be able to work with people with strong computer science background that we decided to capture culture from what the top management preach and practice. So we actually use textual data, which is earnings call transcript, given your background in, in capital market. So the earnings calls, the purpose of earnings calls really talk about the firm's performance mm -hmm. instead of promoting culture. So that help us now to have this uh, cheap talk uh, mm. kind of uh, concerns. Just lip service, you mean? That's right. But if the company has a strong culture, the words of the management will reveal the core values they cherish, mm. they embrace. So that's what we do is we score culture use machine learning techniques from earnings transcripts, which typically uh, are CEOs. Mostly, most times it's the CEOs and the CFOs talking about the past performance. So and it's I, an unintended consequence for us to capture culture. So I actually read in one of your papers that you went through as many as was it over 200,000 transcripts. Yeah. So how do you do that? This is a, a machine that's going through, picking out phrases that reflect, in your opinion, good or bad sort of corporate culture. So what would be some of the phrases you would look for? Um, so would look at for, so for example, like teamwork, we mm. we'll be looking at synonyms to teamwork, such as cooperation, collaboration, but that's not enough. So the technique we have is called word embedding. So what we do is actually we develop 
uh, our own culture dictionary from a concept in linguistic. That mm. is, words of similar meaning tend to show up in the same sentence, like like just neighboring words. So that's how we develop our own culture dictionary. We all know Oxford Dictionary, that's mm -hmm. for standard English. But here, we develop our own uh, culture dictionary, starting from basic C's words, say, to capture the culture of teamwork. We start with teamwork, and the two common seed words is collaboration and cooperation. Then we just go to the uh, earnings, uh, earnings cost transcripts, and look at any other words show up related to teamwork, collaboration, cooperation, and we have a frequency uh, complex uh, algorithm, then we then we're able to identify other set of words that all uh, suggest talking about teamwork. And so your conclusion being that those earnings call transcripts, which included more of these uh, teamwork style phrases, they have been the better performing companies. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what the association we established, mm. that this trade-off thing. So it might take time and effort to build up culture, but once you have strong culture, it really helps you in the long run. I see. So, you know, for any investor out there who's looking at investing in a particular company, whereas perhaps you would have originally just looked at numbers and balance sheets and things like that, now you need to be looking at, you know, what is the corporate culture there, which is something you're measuring. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So going back to the um, issue specifically on AI, um, I may ask you if you have a particular view on how quickly AI will be integrated into the workplace, but also how will it change corporate culture? Because this is a cutting edge technique. On one hand, there's an ethical issue about mm. uh, privacy, right? So given I'm a Chinese national, so facial recognition like is ever present and they never ask your approval. So I think that part we really need to pay attention to is respect of privacy mm -hmm. and like also recent scandals uh, by Facebook changing name to Meta, etc. So there are some huge downside if you not pay attention to uh, how to manage data for commercial use while receiving input from the customers uh, get like a permission. But on the other hand, it's a really powerful tool. So just like my own research because of AI machine learning, I, I was able to capture corporate culture. That would be a quite important metric for the investment community when they look at their portfolio po formation. For example, if they are very high on ESG or E, uh, environmental social performance, they can, they can actually use UI uh, to score uh, potential uh, portfolio firms mm -hmm. and then make investment decision. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely beneficial, uh, helpful. So with the, some of the big tech companies, I imagine it's easier to have a better corporate culture if you're a smaller company, but as the company gets bigger and bigger, is it possible to still maintain a good corporate culture even when you've got companies like Facebook and Amazon that are just so big? Yeah, just uh, you raised this question. Uh, this is a good one you also asked from the beginning. So exactly how cu culture is come about. So definitely uh, from the top. So like mm. uh, Alphabet, Google, they still have founders uh, in place. So they really shape the corporate culture. Mm. The other is definitely uh, competition, mm. uh, like your, how your peers are practicing, and you might not be want to lag in behind if you are very bad in corporate culture, you might have an implode situation as we have seen in some other companies. So uh, five years out, let's say 2026, what do you think the topics will be we're talking about in and around corporate culture? That's a great one. I think uh, these days there are going to be also an important role played by regulation. So we have already heard that SEC is looking at a mandatory disclosure on firms ESG performance. That given firms listed on the market, they need to risk uh, capital from investors and they also have to comply with a regulatory requirement. So I definitely anticipate going forward, more of ESG related uh, values will be an uh, important part of organization culture. It's like you just cannot just look at the bottom line profitability, mm -hmm. sustainability, and equity, diversity, inclusion will be the, the value drivers going forward. So I guess what we're getting to is, and this is something which I think your you know, academic work is trying to concentrate on is, will we ever be at a stage where we can have a measurable number which tells us like what good corporate culture is? Because I'm thinking if you're a young company starting out now, is there certain boxes you should be ticking even if you're starting out today? As a firm's life cycle, at different stage of a life cycle, you don't, you're going to have different priorities. For, from my own research, given we, 
I measure corporate culture from earnings calls. That's by default, you are not a startup. Mm. You, are, you, are not, you are not doing your quarterly earnings calls. But I would think, look at all the successful uh, startup firms, those unicorns, I think uh, culture should be from the very beginning. Yeah. Like for you to be able to grow and to be successful. So, but intermeasurement, that's hard because being a private firm, by definition, you have no obligation to tell people what you are practicing, what you believe in, and how you train your uh, employees uh, within your organization. So that's a, uh, that's a data challenge. Just so I'm clear, when you talk about the uh, coming from the top, corporate culture starts at the top, are you talking about CEOs and CFOs? Or are we talking about the board of directors? So the stock market, right? I think 20% is by the high tech firms and mm -hmm. they are run by their founders. Mm. And you, there, it's a corporate governance issue. Mm. Because even though we, we say that our oh, board is supposed to be arms lines, to be independent, but, but we so, all know so they are hand picked that's right. by the CEO. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the top is really the, the founder, the, uh, the entrepreneur, and the CEOs. Right. Um, which is unfortunate because we're supposed to have, yeah, we're supposed to have an independent board, but it's mm. just on the book, but not in substance. So reading between the lines, you may look at a company like Facebook or Amazon where the founders are still there and you think it's a little unhealthy for the founder and CEO to be also involved with board selection choices. That, that's why that's a joke. <laughs> it's like in the Facebook case, you cannot fire the founder, so you just change the company name. That's the going joke. Sustainable investing and the role of ESG in corporate culture was something that was certainly talked about for 10 years, but it didn't really translate into investment opportunities. But now, due to the rise of indices allowing more direct investment into ESG and sustainable themes, capital allocations are accelerating these trends, creating opportunities that are only going to get bigger and more diverse in the future. If you'd like to read more on this topic, please go to footsierussell.com forward slash research, where you'll find much more information.